most days I wake up and I'm relieved that Britney Spears is still alive. <laughs> One of the biggest pop stars in the world and most people had her written off in 2007 in the same way that we had written off Amy Winehouse. But it's the years after that have a darker narrative suggesting that she's constantly fighting for survival. My love of Britney Spears, it's not a secret. Every month or two, I fall into a deep, deep Britney Spears hole, and I watch video after video of her performing at MTV Awards, world tours and clubs, interviews and documentaries, and I'm just trying to figure out that exact moment where everything just went wrong for our pop princess. So 2001, and this is when things started to get really interesting for Britney Spears. She had released her self-titled third album, and it had songs like Overprotected, Boys, and I'm Not a Girl, Not Yet a Woman, um, all songs declaring independence and uh, demanding to be paid attention to. But it was the lead single, I'm a Slave For You, that marked her departure from her bubblegum past. Disney Britney was now dead, sent off in a hearse. Sexney was upon us. <laughs> so it's just, I mean, like, just look at those hips. Look at them. Like, just for a second, just like, look at them. This is what I do at home to my housemate. I'm like, just look at her. <laughs> at her. <laughs> um, like, those, ab those like hip bones could cut steel and her abs from 1,000 sit-ups a day. I read that before an interview and I believe it because look at them. <laughs> Just look at them. <laughs> Brittany always said that dancing was her therapy and 2001 was the start of her dancing peak. The video above, other than the, the, st the start and the end of it, it's one continuous piece to camera where she is just dancing. And there's certain points where you can see her just going, shit, well, this does not end any moment now. Um, <laughs> but there she is, Brittany, commanding the attention of everyone around her, just daring them, inviting to, to come. Get it, get it, get it, get it. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> Thanks very much, you're all good Brittany fans. So the, this dancing peak continued for three years and her musical output grew maturity because, as she said, she was now becoming the woman she said she wasn't on the album before. So 2003 and 2004, they were big years for our Britney with the release of In The Zone and the Grammy Award winning single Toxic. So Talk Toxic is most people's favourite Britney Spears song. So I'm just going to open the room a little bit, ask people what their favourite Britney Spears song is and if they are correct, I will give them some sweets. So. <laughs> So if anyone wants to just like throw it out. Maybe one more time. One more time? Yeah. That's their favorite? I don't really agree, but here's a bag of buttons. Nice. There you go. Anyone else? Womanizer. What, yes! Oh, you get two sweets. <laughs> <laughs> you get, okay, I'm not gonna throw a drumstick because it can do some damage, but you get a bag of buttons and a bag of Harry Bow, wherever she is, where is she? Oh, I can't throw that far. Pass them back. <laughs> Break the ice. Break the ice. Very, very good. He gets two bags of sweets. Pass them back there. Every time. Every Very good. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to try throw this because. Okay. Hey. Email my heart. Email my heart. <laughs> Fucking fabulous. There you go. Anybody else? We're going to do one more. This has to be good. What? Radar, so good, it was on two albums. That's how good Radar is. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, <clears throat> so <laughs> glad we did that kind of bonding session there. <laughs> so we caught a glimpse into Britney's world with the MTV uh, documentary uh, that came with the In The Zone album. It was called In The Zone and Out All Night. So we followed Britney as she was performing in three different nightclubs around New York City in the space of three hours. You would literally see like blood pouring into, into her boots because she was dancing so damn hard. But you also learned what a ridiculous woman she is. She's never been known to be the smartest woman in the world, but she's really sweet. That's like the line that you always hear. Not clever, but she's really sweet. Um, she was really sheltered, but she was like atrociously aware of it in this documentary. Um, but it also showed a work ethic that a lot of people don't really believe is there. And those performances, okay, this is one of them. My God, this is Breathe On Me. This is like my favorite Britney Spears song. You all gonna fail by not mentioning that one. <laughs> and I, uh, my housemate told me to remove this bit from the lecture, but I'm gonna say it, because we bonded so well there. Um, I always say that the man that agrees to have sex, to me, sex with me during this song is the one. So, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at her. <laughs> uh. Anyway. moments look at this oh anyway anyway everything was going great for our Brittany we had a slight slight glitch early on in 2004 when she married an old sweetheart for 55 hours in Las Vegas but everything was fine we um, ignore the suicidal symbolism and every time because everything was grand 
this winning streak, yeah, despite all that, this winning streak continued with the Onyx Hotel Tour, but an old knee injury, if anyone here is a Britney Spears fan, they know about the Brit knee injury. <laughs> Fucking awful. Um, this old knee injury would soon rear its ugly head, and her Dublin date, June 6th, 2004, I was present. I was 16, and like, discovering sexuality in a new form with these, these kind of performances. Um, but that was to be one of the last dates on her tour because of the, of the knee injury. And this time she took off to recover meant that it was meant to be brief, but instead she fell further into the arms of that weasel, Kevin Federline. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> He's a villain. Anyway, they were blissfully married by September, only going out for like three months. And she announced a career break in October. And this is when things musically started to get a bit mur murky for our girl. Um, her label, Jive Records, they released a greatest hits album and that had a cover of Bobby Brown's My Corrupt Prerogative. Um, if you associate, associate yourself with Bobby Brown at any point in your career, you should be like, mm, maybe not, he killed, <laughs> he killed Whitney Houston. Um, but <laughs> but by, two, by, by 2004, Britney um, began phoning up radio stations herself herself um, because of course this is like pre Twitter pre most social media like she might have had a MySpace account um, she was phoning up uh, radio stations personally and she was announcing uh, that she had a new song to play and this brings us to the lost album era yes very important time so on the radio station Kiss FM Britney announced that she would be releasing a new album called Original Doll and they played a song called Mona Lisa it's your standard mid-90s pop R&B track, something that could have been produced by Timbaland, and it's all about the downfall of a worldwide legend. Silence. Um, this isn't the first time that Britney has sung about someone having everything and having nothing at the same time. Remember a story about a girl named Lucky? <laughs> her, her fixation on songs about gaining self-control or losing everything were a common vein. It's almost like she predicted what was to come. So her label denied all existence of this original Doll album and nothing ever surfaced other than that Mona Lisa song. There was endless uh, conspiracy theories from all fans um, and the one that is the strongest and actually has quite a lot of merit is that she was sick of being a pop puppet and wanted full control of her career and life. Um, the events to follow prove that Britney was in a very unsafe space mentally and maybe if she had released original Doll the way that she wanted to outside of Jive Records, maybe would have a different star on her hands today. So by 2006, um, Britney had two very young children and she was the centre of a media frenzy. Uh, Perez Hilton was one of those people to blame who just had photos of her maybe at her, her lowest ebbs at all times. And it was, it's very clear to see now, looking back, that she was a woman who was definitely su suffering from postnatal depression as well as addiction issues. All you have to do is, go I did this this morning, it's so bad. I did, um, all you have to do is Google image Britney Spears sad or crying. Oh God. And you see her crying on the street, crying in fast food restaurants with her babies on her knee. Um, like it's awful. Like I just went through loads of photos of my housemate this morning and she's like, why do you do this to yourself so often? I was like, because <laughs> I need to feel, Susan. <laughs> So by 2007, she's out partying with Paris Hilton, looking really unhealthy, and she's absolutely shit-faced. Like, there's actually some photos of her with just vomit on her dress as well. Like, it's horrible. Um, there's one video of her where she's crying outside her um, kind of resident community block. Um, she's speaking in an English accent, completely out of it, and she's, like, bawling her eyes out, just pleading with photographers to just leave her alone. Um, it's terrible. And also at this point, she had fired her long-term manager, Larry Rudolph, who was her manager from the very start, maybe one more time date. Um, she had distanced herself from her family. She had lost custody of both of her children. Um, it's reported that the night that she lost custody of her children, she actually slept in a parking lot that night. So um, she was also in one month, she was hospitalized twice in a mental health facility. So during this time, because she had fired her, her manager, her brother, all of her success, she's now been managed by another evil overlord called Sam Lufty. Thank you. Um, and while the tales of her drug use vary, it was claimed that he used to crush pills into her food on top of whatever else she was taking herself. Um, and the night that she shaved her head, we all know that video, it's awful, again, um, it was rumored um, that she did that because she wanted to remove any trace of drug use, which is something that you can, from if you use something like crystal meth, you can trace it in people's hair. So that is alleged one reason why people say she shaved her head. We're not quite sure, really. I don't know. Maybe she wanted to look at Sinead O'Connor, but you know, 
whatever. Anyway, so somehow during all of this time, she managed to record Blackout. Um, this is the album that had Gimme More and Peace of Me. Uh, fun fact about Peace of Me, Robin, everyone loves Robin, right? She does a lot of the backing vocals on that track. You can hear it really clearly. Very cool, very with it, very edgy. Good woman, Britney. Um, <laughs> So it was her best and most critically acclaimed album. Like Rolling Stone gave it four stars, which is like tough to do with Rolling Stars if you're a pop act. Um, it was her best and most critically acclaimed, acclaimed time, but it also brought her most public humiliation to date, and that was, of course, the VMA performance. Behind the scenes, all of her family were working together to get her back under control. And th through many court appearances, some that she didn't even really show up for, um, she was placed under a cons conservatorship of her father. This meant she wasn't mentally intact to control her own finances or her career. She wasn't allowed to sign any contracts or access her bank account. But somehow, they all thought it was a good idea for her to go on and record an album and go on a world tour. So in th um, that album and tour was Circus. Um, in 2008, uh, the For the Record documentary, cameras follow her around during this time where she's been watched like a hawk by a team of people. And it's the last honest interview that we've ever had with the pop star. She flat out admits that she is sad, that she has no control in her life, and most heartbreaking of all, she says, I used to be a cool chick, but I'm not anymore, before bursting into tears. The fact that she says cool chick just proves that she really isn't a cool chick anymore. <laughs> She's like one of those pencil cases we used to have in like 95. Oh. <laughs> so she was completely aware of the damage. Thanks, Neve. <laughs> So she was so aware of the damage that she had done to her own career, and, but she wasn't playing the victim either. Um, but she was stuck inside a career that she did not want to be in at all. She always says these like, lovely things like, if she wasn't a pop star, she would love to be a teacher or a lawyer. It's like, no, honey, no. <laughs> you're really sweet, but you're not very clever. Um, so I saw the circus tour, um, and there was, like, there was a light in her eyes, sort of. And um, that's kind of what most Britney fans are looking for. We genuinely want her to be happy. Like, that's, that's our big thing for Britney Spears. Um, and on Circus, the majority of her songs were about being the center of attention, be it good or be it bad. Kill the Lights, fantastic song. It was the perfect way to capture the cat and mouse game that she played with the paparazzi. They can't live without each other, but if they're going to bring her down, she's bringing them down with her. So Circus was her sixth album, and it was her fifth number one album. The only album of hers, um, other than the terrible Britney Jean, which Britney Spears fans deny all existence of, um, Blackout only reached number four, and that was because her life was literally falling apart. Not a single bit of me media promotion was done, it, and yet it still did very well in all the charts across the world. So Circus also had Womanizer, great song, and If You Say Seek Amy on it too. These are perfect pop songs that were born out of pure pop turbulence. And she was dancing again. Great. So some songs felt like a threat to the media, especially on Womanizer when she says, you say I'm crazy, I got you crazy. <laughs> there you go. Um, minor victories every time. Every time there's one, like, yes, good woman, Brittany. She seemed happy, and we were delighted. Then around 2011, things got dark again. She released Femme Fatale, and even though it has one of the most life-affirming songs ever, Till the World Ends, that was written by Kesha, um, the light was gone again. Um, it genuinely felt like she was just being carted around, drugged to the ninth, and prodded on stage with a stick. On her brief stint as an X Factor judge, she could only utter words like, really cool, after her performances. <laughs> it was uh, like, no other vocabulary came into her head. It was awful. It was she looked great, but like, nothing there. Um, she didn't want to be there. Her stare was completely vacant. We were in despair. The fans were in despair. Why can't they actually just let her retire? Let her roll around in her whatever millions she has left. And now that she had uh, shared custody of her children again, why can't they just let her be a mom? Who are these people that can't make her do this? So Britney Spears is no ordinary pop star, and it took almost 10 years of absolute turmoil for her father, Jamie, her controller, to realize this. Now she has got a residency in Las Vegas with her Piece of Me show, so perfectly titled, and she is settled. She gets to play mom by day, and then she's mega star by night. Um, all of the videos from the Vegas show show her with that light back in her eyes, and she's kind of dancing, which is great too. Um, her knee injury, oh, that blasted knee injury. Um, it has restricted some of her trademark moves, but she flips her hair like her life depends on it, and that's something to hold on for. Um, she's not going through the motions anymore. Um, she's due to release a song any day now. Like, like it, it could be released right now. 
like, ah, oh, it's called Make Me. I'm so excited. Anyway, so, and there's going to be an album out at some point this year. Very exciting. It's, uh, it's called B9, which is also means for folic acid. So really, she's giving us all something we need. <laughs> it's, especially if you're with child. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so all of that, all of that, though, is absolute background noise, because at least on the surface, it seems like she's happy. She, like, finally, she might be happy. Um, she has been through the fucking mill, and even even though the only control she has is limited to her absolute bonkers Instagram account. <laughs> follow, follow immediately. It is so entertaining. She's just such a weird woman. Um, she's still standing and proving time and time again that if she's not stronger than yesterday, she's definitely stronger than 2007. Thank you all. <laughs>